Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack, and we also have Calvin Ellis, ready to rock. Well, um, what is it? Hey, was it the gang's all here? More um, pictures from Daredevil Born Again are showing up, and we see you know, was it Nelson and Murdoch are back together with Karen Page. Oh man, they didn't kill her off yet? Get rid of her! So, thankfully, they brought the band back together, which was um, the most, in my mind, the most successful show Marvel's had outside of, of course, the classic Incredible Hulk series. Um, I know, um, it, it, only to say the side point is, the hard part for Kevin Feige is to have one who's been even bigger in in TV than he was in comic books. Um, Jeff Loeb, having to crush Jeff Loeb and get him out of there. And then ultimately, even though he had plans to not use Karen or Foggy, keep as little as he could from the other show, but keep the Punisher. And now at the point after a disastrous initial shooting of Daredevil Born Again, I guess they were fueled on the blip and a lot of court cases trying to be different. And they realized that's not what they want. They need a hit. They've gone back to the formula. And um, thankfully, you know, it took them a long time, but they got the they got the band back together. The show, the show worked. The dynamic worked. You know, why not do more of that? You know, this is abruptly stopped. Um, but uh, it seems like someone is against having Karen Page in there for some reason. <laughs> I never, I never liked Karen Page as a character in the comic, and they continue her characterization, all the same things that I didn't like about her in the comic on the show. Not, I have no problem with the actress. I really like the actress. Uh, of course, her name's going to escape me now, but like the actress, I, I like all of the cast, uh, all of the uh, casting that they did for Daredevil across the line and i didn't think i was going to i didn't think i was going to like the lead as much as i did uh i actually got to meet the actor who plays foggy who was at a convention i actually got to meet him and i you know shook his hand thanked him because i said this is for me great because daredevil was one of my favorite and one of my gateway comics as a kid and brian michael bendis took that away from me just totally wrenched it from my hands to the point i couldn't enjoy the book anymore and then i started watching this series and i was like man this is like everything that I felt and enjoyed as a kid when I was reading it. So that was, uh, you know, I paid him that compliment. He said it was the writers. I was like, no, it's all of you guys. So, you know, I really love that. But, yeah, Karen, unfortunately, <laughs> one of the times when they, like, really stuck to the source material and I'm, they could have made a little bit of a departure, they did so with Karen Page. I just can't stand that character. No, I'm very in a different mind because I've read the old ones. And I enjoyed it back then, even though it was a, a classic Marvel type of romance where the two were stuck in the middle of this relationship. I read those. Hmm? And I said, I read those too. You know, so I, I was, read uh, those. I read every to the point where she left. She goes to San Francisco. She gets the movie. She gets the movie career. You know, she would pop back in here and there. And then the whole thing would born again. But even in those or even in those earlier days, you know, her character was i mean that's one of the reasons why she ended up being written out of the series she just wasn't that she wasn't that crucial to it overall and she's a selfish character that came out and that just came out over you know over a long period of reading Karen page is a selfish character i don't know i can't really agree with that but um ultimately she was in the place where she you know they introduced obviously the, the nuttiness of mike murdoch and she didn't necessarily go for Mike. She went for Matt, of course. <laughs> when they were clearly going off of the, you know, having fun with the secret identity. So ultimately, the way she played it and which way the character in the comic book uh, was, was most of the time until someone decided that, you know what, we need to jazz up this book and put the Black Widow in it. And ultimately, you know, for the Black Widow to get out, it had to be that Daredevil wasn't, you know, it wasn't doing it for Daredevil. He was now into Elektra now, or the, whoever he was married to after that. So it's like just the, whereas ultimately to have someone this tied into the book, it's almost like Betty, you know, 
Whereas, um, you know, like Betty, uh, Betty um, Ross was kind of really tied into the book. And I think they kind of moved on successfully, but once Miller brought her back, then it was kind of, for me, hard to, to bring, get rid of her because, you know, she was, at this point, they figured it out. They cleared up there. They did a shocking story, but at the same time, you know, it just kind of felt, eh, what are you going to do? But ultimately, uh, I just feel more on the lines of Kevin Feige just trying to torch the show as best he could and having fans be the ones to do the work. Oh, look, they don't have, they're not in costume. Oh, this, that, and the other. And it's like, <laughs> well, he was in costume. No, no, the third, he was in the other thing. It's like, all right, I get it. That makes the, you know, I can hear you, but it's like, uh, ultimately at the end of the third one, he wasn't going to go back to the other outfit. It was just kind of the, because most of the Born Again, the actual Born Again comic book, he's in it in the, the, the early part, and then he's in it in the what's the name. But then the shocking part is having the, who's that guy, Bullseye in the outfit. And I think they're also highlighting that another character is going to be brought into the series. A classic character is going to be in here. And they've already announced Bullseye was coming back. So I wonder who this next person is going to be. So. Electro. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the less they can talk about the blip and tell where these characters were when it happened, the better. Because I'm, I'm totally, oh, well, I've been blipped out since it happened. And they've decided that this is a key part to say, just in case you didn't want, you can make us another million by watching Endgame on, on Disney Plus. You know, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, you know, this, this thing has been, it's going to be tough because obviously with the fact that they, they scrapped and re, totally re, redid most of this and keeping some of the footage just for cutaways, you know, it, it kind of bodes well. And people don't put that kind of thing on Marvel projects when they kind of start over and say, oh, yeah, they did what they're supposed to. Whereas someone else, a DC project, oh, look, it's terrible. We know it's not going to be terrible. We know it's going to be terrible. There's no way to fix it. Uh, look at them. They're trying to fix it, but it's like, whereas Marvel is, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, thanks, guys. You guys did it. They're going to put it back in order. Hey, that's a standard That's a standard Marvel zombie hating. If it's Marvel, it's got to be. If it's Marvel, it's got to be good. That's pretty yeah. much it. Everything else, nothing else exists. Never read an independent comic. Have no idea, you know, have no idea of anything outside of Marvel. Which, hey, which works for them. So outside, just the sideline, this will probably, we're probably pretty much at the end, you know, keeping, not utilizing cartoons or the whole TV show. In this new thing with TV shows, what were your favorites of the Marvel? If you put the Marvel and the, and the Netflix Marvel in one bag of shows, what show you think is one of the best ones? Out of all the the Netflix and the Marvel TV series? Yes, yeah. Uh, well, I agree with you. Daredevil is the best of all, all of them. That was the best. They, 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 they just, they made the comic come to life. So, that, you know, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 for Daredevil, with the exception of some stuff I didn't like about the last season. They had him running around in that black outfit too much, like they hated the red. Uh, the, you know, the dumb thing of like, hey, here's my face, Kingpin. Like, no, don't confirm it. <laughs> look, how, look how much trouble he put you through through this season, and he didn't even have 100% confirmation. And then you, you showed your face, and Vanessa's there. I was just, just dumb stuff. Dumb. These people want you dead. Come on, man. I don't care if you see my face. You should care. He just tried to kill you several times this season. Uh, but aside, uh, Daredevil, I thought, was, Daredevil it, it was just the best. Uh, with the stuff that came out, I like Falcon and Winter Soldier. I like Hawkeye. I think that's it. I, you know, some episodes here and there of What If, which I thought was overall just very, very disappointing at the end of the day. Very self-indulgent. But yeah, I would say yeah, Daredevil, Hawkeye, Falcon, Daredevil, Falcon, Winter Soldier, Hawkeye. Okay, I would go. I think more. What was it? I put the Punisher up there before it, and then uh, I never saw the Punisher. Oh, you never saw the Punisher, and then um, I next, never saw the Punisher. I guess next would be 
It feels like it's because there's so much Ooh. issues I had with the Falcon and Winter Soldier because of the the Flag Smasher and her kind of arc of you know where they kind of stilted it, and if they kind of done, if they did. Um, I mean, hmm? you mean her being a woman who didn't have to take. You mean her being a woman who didn't have to take responsibility for her actions? That was it. That part. The, the, the responsibility part? for her actions that she could. She could um, decide to blow up stuff as a terrorist, and then we're supposed to feel sorry for her because of some other stuff she's doing. She pushes, yeah, the blip. You know, she she pushes stuff into like with John Walker. I didn't like that. the The cool part about John Walker was that you know, imagine having you know, well, Captain America had skill. He had power, and he was noticeably stronger than Captain America. And Captain America was worried early on saying, wow, this guy, and he's like walking away from the fight saying, I didn't even feel any of that, you know? <laughs> he's like, and even when they had the fight where Cap wins and it's after Wesley comes through like with a, with a bloodlust attacking him, there's a point in the thing where I think I brought it up in the show before where the red he realizes Steve Rogers is talking to Captain America and he's like what is going on here not realizing that the that Steve Rogers is actually the skull and um he's like he throws his shield or throws something to mess up the red dust and it falls into Steve Rogers face turning it into the red skull and then Captain America goes to the US agent and says Thanks. I didn't even notice that he was trying to use his red dust against me. And then said, "How do you know I was trying to hit hit him?" <laughs> like, like that's the classic, classic kind of guy. That's like a, he's a bullheaded type of guy, and they kind of made him into like the lesser than Cap. When what's the name didn't care that he was lesser than Cap. He was just like, "I'm doing it my way." Oh man, I lost my parents. I'm killing everybody. <laughs> so they, they they made Captain America more about the super soldier serum and less about the guy who who they yeah. chose because it's never the super soldier serum. It's the guy who's chosen. Steve Rogers is the right man for Captain America because of his character, not because of the super soldier serum. And then we got the show, and it became very apparent. Oh, he you know this guy's like he's getting oh he's getting beat up by the uh, the Dora Milaje. He's getting beat up by these guys. He's getting beat up by these guys. And what was he chosen? You know, the, what was he chosen for? I, uh, when they killed the uh, oh my goodness, Battlestar, and yes, th that should have tipped was... me off. Though. Yep, that should have tipped me off to what they were going to do with the shows, where like a whole bunch of characters were like, oh, these characters are all these characters are all up for grabs, except for the ones that we want to use in the future. So everybody else, you know, we we can kill them for emotional effect or for story effect at the end of the day. And I'm like, but that, but he's still alive in the comic. Why would you kill him here? They, mm -hmm. I, I should have, that should have been like, hey, okay, these guys are going to play fast and loose with a whole bunch of stuff ex with the exception of the things that they like. But no, you nailed it. I mean, I remember exactly the issue that you're talking about. Wasn't that, uh, was that Captain America 350? Yeah, yep. Captain America yeah, 350. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, where they're doing that fight, the whole thing with John Walker, the whole thing with John Walker, but and they spent such a long period of time. I don't know what they do with Cap right now. Some of the stuff, to be quite honest, comes across as very jingoistic, but uh, they spent such a long time explaining that it's the man, it's Steve Rogers. You know, Steve Rogers is the right guy. You mix that character with the Super Soldier Serum, then you get this once in a lifetime. You get this once in a lifetime creation of Captain America and everybody else is always is always you know a sec you know is always second place doesn't matter who it is because Steve's Steve Rogers character is that sterling and they missed that on this show they really made it more about oh well yes the serum they didn't get no that was never it that was never it because in the comic you know uh the U.S. agent John Walker he could mow down the people he could just mow them down at the end of the day and it wouldn't be a problem Okay, the problem was the problem was his character and the, what they lead up to him getting the super soldier serum, making him this sad sack loser who should have never been there in the first place. That was it's just poor. It's, it's I thought it was poor storytelling for those particular reasons, but I still enjoyed the show. I still enjoyed the show overall because I didn't know it was going to get much worse after 
I didn't know the TV shows are going to get much, much worse after that. You know, whole episode with no Moon Knight, just him riding on a, a ship with a hippopotamus. <laughs> well, I think, uh, well, the last, I guess the last bit with that was when he becomes Falcon America and he's giving those long speeches and it's just like, yo, you need to chill. I Captain. knew it. I knew you couldn't resist. <laughs> I knew you couldn't resist. <laughs> but um, going to the going to, I think the, the hard part is I think I was watching, and I don't I, I, story wise is not much there, but I was watching like one of the opening scenes to the spirit, and I saw the spirit bouncing on the on the top of buildings, and it's basically just a silhouette, and I was just like, oh my god, like they tricked us again. At least I mean I know the Batman movies slowed down Batman, you know, in the air on his rope. But it's like to the spirit. Hmm? The, Frank Frank Miller's the spirit. No, the, the uh, yeah, the spirit was when you see like especially at the beginning where he's running on top of buildings, and I merely saw in my head. Oh man, yeah, that was hot, yeah, that was hot trash. But not talking about I'm talking about like the visuals of how having merely in my mind seeing Moon Knight in the air, and I was just like, they really need to take this thing off the of ground as much as they can. Like I know they can't afford to. So that's obviously why we don't see Daredevil in the air and that sort of thing, but no, they could have done in the that. Daredevil at that time when they were doing Netflix, they didn't have the money mm -hmm. uh, that they had then. I mean, they didn't have the money then for Daredevil because they wouldn't even show like the radar set. You know, we couldn't even get that much at the end of the day, but they had the uh, they had the money with Moon Knight. Because when you look at that third episode and you look what they put the money into yes. instead of the special effects with that whole barge and, and the uh, the Egyptian you know the Egyptian god of the river you know when you have that whole that when you have that whole thing going over there yeah you have plenty of money if you take out that and you take out all the stuff with uh, him being that other Moon Knight that you know Jeff uh, uh, Jeff Lemire wrote you know you take that out okay great and then Moon Knight is not this character with a very gripping origin or history at the end of the day what does he usually sell for he's really cool to look at he's a great visual character you know the, the things that you can do with the plane with the white and the black and the uh, you know the cape always looking like a half moon or something all those great visuals that you get with them so you could really play that up and we got all of what maybe two good scenes two just, you know just you know just malpractice at the end of the day but I, I I do hope they don't muck it up with Daredevil. It's just just get get Jeff Lowe back. You know, just you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> Make up. Yeah. You know, say Jeff, we're gonna put you back as a, a silent. We're gonna put you back as a silent writer. Okay, I can't stand you. It's got to be me. But you knew this. But you you really knocked it out of the park. You did better on this than I did on any of these TV shows. Come back here. You know, come back here. You know, for us and help us out, please. <laughs> Well, I think him trying to do the one and done and seeing what he could do as a, a sequel or saying, as I think you said it, the springboard for the movie stuff. And it's just like, oh, okay, we do this. And then we get established that uh, Scarlet Witch is a villain. It's just like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you had to do that, but, <laughs> and now, you know, they're trying to, you know, like basically, you know, she's, at the stage where she's cool with not doing this stuff again, but um, you know, ultimately you had someone who was, you know, there's a video of her talking about the Scarlet Witch and someone's arguing with her and she's like, some of the guys like, he's, she's not in the X-Men. Like, why are you trying to say she's in the X-Men? It's like, yes, she was in the X-Men. And he's like, no, she wasn't. And he's like, I'm not talking about the movies. I'm talking about the comic books. And she's like, <laughs> a devil look like, yo, chill. Like that sort of thing of people trying to be right. Where you had someone who not not I'm not saying that she's a full blown comic fan, but at least when she's out there, you know, you know, paraded talking about the comic no, those, stuff. Are, hmm? those are those no, those are the super nerds who come out there with that nonsense. Like I had somebody trying to convince me. We had a kind of comic shop. This guy was trying to convince me that uh, Jason, that uh, the second Robin. Wasn't Jason Todd that the second Robin was Tim Drake? And me and this other guy were looking at him like, no, it was uh, Jason Todd. And he was like, no, no, no. And then we quickly realized this was a guy who had read one too many comics and was too reversed in the world, that fantasy. So we were like, okay, 
all right, you know, just mm. back away slowly. Don't make any more eye contact and everything wow. should be all right. Yeah, so. Yeah, but looking forward to it. I'm pretty sure when they say, oh, we're going to see a character, you know, old time character. This kind of... With Daredevil, you only got about five or six characters. <laughs> There's only about five or six characters, including Daredevil, that are any weight in his history. So, you know, we already know that the Kingpin's going to be there. Daredevil's going to be there. You got Elektra. Nobody really cares about Stick, even though I've always loved the character. So it's only it's only one or two other people we could really put it to. But hey, why play spoiler this early, right? It, let's play nice. Well, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's a short list, but who it could be? Someone during the fun period, or it could be someone during the Miller post that period, or where well, we see somehow saw an echo before <laughs> before anyone else. We're just like, yeah, this makes sense. Let's let's give her let's let's try to go deep into this background and stuff so people don't get in trouble with it. So that's something I had to worry about is doing the PC version of the Daredevil Born Again, because I think the hard part in, in comics books is like, like, what was it? I think the Vigilante had a ton of, in, um, after the new Teen Titan, the Vigilante had this big burst, and you had Keith Pollard doing this initial three issues of this burst of doing this character that's visually stunning and whatnot, and it got a Baxter type of issue. And then, like a couple months later, you no, know, a couple years later, Marvel puts out the Punisher, and the Punisher is getting two and three series right after this initial series. So it's just like, and the approach is different. Where they're trying to do a vigilante that's not crazy and doesn't just kill the wrong people. Where Marvel said, "Here's the Punisher. He goes after criminals, and those guys are wrong, and he kills them." <laughs> and the kids are like. Yes, <laughs> we like the fact he go out and kills villains. That's what we want to see. And they have shots where Bill's like Klaus has got the big guns and he's shooting all these people all over the place. And it's just like the kids just want that. That's the, you know you're asking too much to try to explain to make sure we see that this person's a villain that the vigilante takes out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they explain anything. They like, we're gonna fight evil with evil. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So Yay! <laughs> don't try to clean up the the you know the whole like the whole backdrop of having the Catholic vigilante is fun, but don't try to go too far and say you know, hey you know Matt, are you really justified in what you're doing? You're going out and prosecuting people that you're beating up in the street. You're like yo. They're not supposed well, they to do, sit around and make uh, sense of this. If they do that, if they do that, then why have the show? You know, that's and that's the bigger problem with it too. They they age the audience to the part where the audience doesn't know how to do anything but analyze the stuff. They can't enjoy it. They forget that this was never meant for adults. This was meant for kids. The idea of anybody going to work and then coming home and getting dressed up in an outfit to go and fight crime at night. Adults would never think about that. They'd be like, "What do you? No, that's a kid's dream." At the end of the day, that's kids' uh, wish fulfillment. At the end of the day, and I can go more. I can definitely, you know, go into that deeper. But once you have to start, you're like, "Well, we got to make it as believable as possible." Like, no, you did that already. When you guys said, "Hey, we're going to do the Netflix series," and the Netflix series are going to be these lower tier characters, and it's going to be darker, and he's going to be the street level hero. Well, because we don't have really have the money, <laughs> we don't have the money. <laughs> to do what we did in the films, but look, it'd be a good chance to expand the Marvel Universe. They nailed it with Daredevil. They nailed it, okay? And not only did they nail it first season, all three seasons enjoyable. All three seasons enjoyable. Mm -hmm. No problem. Even when, they brought the pun even when they brought the Punisher on, okay? They got him down at the end of the day, and they got down the distinct difference between Daredevil and the Punisher. Why Daredevil is right, and the Punisher is wrong. But if you're going to get to the point, well, how can you prosecute these guys and you know this is, and Clark, Clark, why are you fool? Why are you lying to everybody every day when you go to the Daily Planet? No, no, you gotta, you can't lie. He's gotta reveal his secret identity, even though it doesn't work story wise. Because once you've done that, you, you totally undermine uh, something that's coessential to the character. And with Daredevil, when you take if you if you take that same approach, if you take away the dichotomy of the character, you have really lost something fundamental to him as well. Just enjoy it, people. 
just enjoy it. You're not that good at analysis anyway. You're not. <laughs> just enjoy it. Yeah, well, I would turn that those statements right to Feige and say, you don't need to kill yourself on this. There are good guys and bad guys, and as Wally West said, the good guy's job is to kill the bad guys. And you don't have to play that that hard edge, but at the same time, just have fun with it. And then you have your poignant story where they kind of have a reflection moment. Keep those few and far between and make sure it is the moment that you think it's going to be instead of the moment where you sit around there. We explained why the Hulk did X, Y, Z. We had a big problem that the Hulk was, you know, being calmed down by a lullaby. What, because he's a childlike character and they just came up with something simple where people would laugh, oh, sun's going down, people, <laughs> and it's like, no, the hard Hulk is not a childlike, what do you think him saying Hulk smash is, is, is doing? Like, you don't think that that's supposed to be childlike? So it's like, no, Josh no, Whedon, he, bad Josh Whedon, he came up with a lullaby. No, no, so those guys, so those guys, again, if you were to ask him, okay, so what should, it, so what should calm him down? Sex. <laughs> it's like you give him. He, he likes he likes hard mellow. What mellow when you play? It's, it goes against his type, you know. He's like he's the Hulk and he's Rage Monster, but then he listens to metal and that calms him down. It's like it makes total sense. Like that sort of. <laughs> and, and they're not thinking. They're not thinking either because see that right over there has to be something that he with a trusted person and you could do this type of stuff fine. Otherwise. Other people will be able to do it, and then they could just turn the Hulk off whenever they wanted to. So, you know, but those are the things you think about when you're when you're actually writing the character and trying to you're writing the character, you're creating a story and trying to make this as real as possible so people suspend disbelief, rather than what these guys are doing, trying to make it real. It's not real. It doesn't matter how well written something is. It's not real. And it's very easy to pick apart something that's not real because it's not real. Yeah. You know, so when, anytime I go, oh, you, you, look at this, look at this, it's not real. You're supposed to suspend disbelief. And if you can't, these are not things that you should be entertaining yourself with. You should be entertaining yourself with nonfiction. Okay. Or just read the fiction that you think, yeah, this is exactly what would happen in real life. Okay. This, this is the fictional thing that would happen in real life. Okay. Great. Well, I mean, Other than that, just enjoy it. Yeah. The, la the last bit is in that vein is to say you look at someone like, you know, which a lot of sequels take their note from the Wrath of Khan, where it's always someone coming back for, for revenge. Ultimately, the you know, Harv Burnett, who's doing, I think, the $6 million man before, that's what he was known for, even though he's doing TV. And they gave him Star Trek to do without having. Gene Roddenberry off his head. He took the series and they looked at the whole thing, to get the dynamic, and then he picked out the episode that he wanted to see some more of, which was the Khan episode, and he came with a whole story around it, right? But it's like taking the dynamic, they did have, add kind of a naval thing, but the naval aspect was kind of in the, um, was the balance of terror, where they're going against the Romulans, and they're like, <laughs> they're like two submarines shooting <laughs> missiles at each other. Hmm? Could you imagine somebody doing something like that, what you just described today? Could you imagine that? Somebody actually imagine. looking at a series, looking at a series, watching it so they understand it, what works about it. Hey, this was good. Maybe we can expand on this. Could you imagine them having the humble nature to do something like that as opposed yeah. to the hubris that most of these people come in with? No. Yeah. I mean, but again, you look at the quality of something like Wrath of Khan, Okay, and then you look at something like what if, where the only thing that matters are the characters that we create. Everything else, eh. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, if if you even feel like this is saying for you guys to try to write the ship, you got a ship that's already is going to go on course because you have a series, but at the same time, don't f it up. <laughs> Just go give us Jeff. Put Jeff Low back on it. Because if you don't know what to do and you're worried about someone who's obviously, and I'm saying I wasn't a heroes guy, but I think, you know, at the same time, he, um, and like Jeff Loeb, his movie credits were, you know, like, were small movies of, of, that could have been hits, but they, they weren't, right? He had a couple small movies, but he then went to comic books and became a, 
a big fish in the in the small pond and then they're like who do we pick out of out of these comic guys and there's tons of people that have done three million arcs and story and this that and the other writer or writer artists or the image guys and that sort of thing and the person they pick out is like oh wow that jeff this jeff Loeb guy he's pretty hot in comic books look he's done x-men stuff he's done superman stuff and he did movies yes him <laughs> and let's use him you know so it's like you know and at the same time he showed he you know which i wasn't I wasn't a, a big fan. I wasn't a fan of heroes, but I know some comic book guys that loved heroes and the Daredevil, Daredevil stuff works. So it's like he knows TV, he knows what to bring, you know, put the behinds in seats. So like it's, and I understand he had to he had to destroy him. But if this goes south again, you know, and we got a season where we got to wait till season two for it to get better. He had to do the first stuff because of the break. Like no, he, he's the reason why the, Kevin Feige is the reason because there, there's a break. So. Um, hoping good things and little about the blip. I got your born again, born again after the blip. I do not want to see all this things. Or now we're like, this is we bringing it back, so it's born again. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, hoping you know, hoping we get the dynamic and don't screw it up too much. Because they remember they they put the band back together at the end of three. Let's not immediately do the Ghostbusters. We got sued by everybody right after that. So we got to break up again. What? <laughs> that, time, that scene when they're walking, because I guess that's the last thing I can show, is uh, this thing where you see these guys walking. Should not be the breakup. Of the, oh, I got to put the screen on. Put the screen on, and then we'll get out of here. Um, here we go. This video here. Of them walking is not them breaking up and saying we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta break up. We're being sued by everybody. But anyway, any other last words before we get out of here? No. All right then. I think we said it all. Spinnerack. We're out. Out.